For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. BYU 11, Utah Valley 7 is our final score. Time now for our final stats presented by Deseret News. BYU wins it by four on a day when 26 hits were sprayed around the Miller Park Diamond. 13 each for BYU and UVU. Cougs took a 7-0 lead in this game. They scored one in the first, five in the second, one in the third. So 7-0 BYU through three. What a response, though, from Utah Valley. They took a 7-0 game and made it 7-6. Pretty good for a team on a 13-game and now 14-game losing streak. But Utah Valley indeed got back in this one as they put one across the plate in the fourth, one in the fifth, big inning in the sixth, four-run inning for Utah Valley. And it was 7-6 to six after five and a half. But in the bottom of the sixth, a nice answer from BYU, one run across to restore a multi-run lead. And at that point, it was 8-6. to six. Three more in the eighth to 11-6. to six. Utah Valley put one across in the top of the ninth. Your final score is 11-7. to seven. Again, both teams 13 hits. BYU committed the only two errors of the day. Utah Valley left nine on, and BYU left a seven stranded. Utah Valley uh, today got a hit from everyone in their starting lineup. Uh, quite an amazing feat there for a team that, again, hasn't won since the second game of the year. They've now lost 14 straight, but everybody contributed today for Utah Valley. So they don't win the game, but they can take a positive uh, in the fact that uh, everyone in the lineup got at least a hit. They did hit, uh, did record 13 hits and score seven runs on the day. So that's a pretty good number uh, for Utah Valley, all things considered. BYU, a season run, a season high in runs with 11 today. Another, another big double-digit hit day for BYU at 13 for the contest. And the Cougs do win for a fourth straight time. So BYU on the year goes to 7-11. 7-11, Utah Valley falls to 2-14. Non-conference game for BYU. They'll get back in the League Wars on Thursday, home to San Francisco. So in the all-time series against Utah Valley, BYU now improves to 31-9 and all-time. BYU has won 10 in a row against their crosstown rivals in this, the UCCU crosstown clash. BYU wins a home opener for a fourth straight game, and they've won eight of their last nine lid lifters here at Miller Park. A lot of good things today. A lot of hits, a lot of runs, and a big one in the win column for BYU. 11-7 is your final. We'll have post-game interviews coming up after this on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball. Now back to the ballpark and the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, four wins in a row for BYU. 11-7, your final. Cougars over UVU in the UCCU Crosstown Clash. Pleased to welcome into the broadcast booth here at Miller Park, Andrew Pintar. Andrew, a three-for-three day today with three RBIs and four runs scored. The consummate leadoff performance. Andrew, congrats to you and the boys. Nice win. Thank you. So where you guys were a week ago, let's say, uh, after Dixie to where you guys are now, what a difference a week makes. How do you describe what's kind of transpired here in the last week? Yeah, we've kind of regathered as a team, and then as a bunch of teammates, and we've had a couple meetings, and we've kind of just relaxed and just kind of played for each other. We've kind of been tense a little bit, and... I haven't been doing things the right way, and we kind of regathered, talked th- talk things out, and now we we got, a, we got a thing going in the dugout every time we get a hit and stuff, and it's kind of got, got rallies going, and it's got us going, and we love it. Confidence is always going to be an issue when you lose, say, six in a row, yeah. but you had to have always believed that, that the kind of things we're seeing and the kind of swings we're seeing were still a part of this team. It was a matter of time. Yeah, I mean, we knew we were good. We knew we knew we could do this, and it just was a matter of time and a matter of just regathering and finding ourselves and playing for each other. How much of good at-bats is contagious, do you think? It's really contagious. It leads to the next guy. Talk, we always talk about getting the next guy up, and leads to good things, leads to rallies. And there was a bunch of good at-bats this game that led to rallies, which was awesome. You know, Coach always says it, and it's never really not just a cliche because in in-state games, no matter who's trending up or down, uh, teams tend to play maybe above where they've been when it's an in-state game. And here UVU comes in, lost 13 in a row. Yeah. Man, they swung the bat well today, yeah. scored a few runs. You still get the win, but that's a team that was playing hard to beat a rival. Yeah, I mean, these in-state games, they're, they're tough. They're, they're a dogfight the whole game, and we saw that this game. We just got to, when we, when we keep scoring, we got to keep scoring. So a lot was made of the fact that uh, this is the, the only the second home game in the last 34 games overall going yeah, back yeah. You know, to last season, of course. How nice was it, even on a chilly day, to get fans in the stands and be back in the friendly confines? It was awesome. And we were talking before the game that it's just, it was a great environment here. A lot of fans showed out. They were excited, cheering us on. It was just it was all around awesome. 
every every team wants their leadoff guy to go three for three and <laughs> score a bunch of runs and drive in runs. But how much responsibility do you feel with the role you have to be the table setter, not just a table setter, but a, but a producer for this team? Man, I just I just look at it as trying to get the next guy up and just doing my job, trying to get the rally going, just trying to have a good at bat every time because that's all you can ask for as a, as a leadoff guy. Two doubles and a triple today. How would you describe your swings and what you were seeing today? Honestly, I just was staying with my approach, trying to stay in the middle of the field, looking for a fastball. And luckily, you know, I got ahead in some counts, some 2-0 counts, and, which put me in a better spot. But all around, yeah, I just was looking for fastballs, and luckily I got some. Okay, day off tomorrow and then back into the league wars with USF coming in. What a great way to get league play underway, by the way, last week. You know you're at the top of the uh, top of the table, if you will, at a 3-0 and start with that sweep. Try and keep it going on the weekend, right? Yeah, of course. Just got to keep this same energy going into this weekend, and I think we'll be good. Andrew, thanks for coming up. I appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that is Andrew Pintar. The coach, Mike Littlewood, next here on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. For more BYU baseball, let's rejoin the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right, our final segment of today's BYU ba- baseball broadcast will be a conversation with the skipper, Mike Littlewood. His team defeats Utah Valley by a score of 11-7 today. And the home opener at Miller Park, home opener 2021, goes down as a fourth straight lid-lifting win here in Provo. Cougs have won eight of the last nine home openers, and they tend to play UVU in a lot of their season openers. They played them in 1920 and now 21, and have won all three. In fact, BYU's beaten the Wolverines in 10 straight and has now won 31 of 40 against the rivals from up the parkway. Coach Mike Littlewood, congratulations on a fourth consecutive win. Yeah, thanks. It was uh, it, The guys are playing great, and we um, came out with a lot of energy. The guys swung the bat. Um, you know, it's, it's amazing. At LMU, pitching showed up and hitting showed up. Tonight, uh, we used a couple guys we didn't really want to in Reed, Reed McLaughlin and, and uh, Bryce Robison, but they came in and did the job and, and shut things down. But overall, you know, we're talking about getting wins, and, and that it was a good quality win. It was always going to be a staff day. You went six deep today. Yeah, you know, we wanted to – so McKay Johnson came up to us, and, and I wanted to get McKay in our big 6'6", six, six, right-hander from Atlanta, who runs the ball up to 96, 97 miles an hour. He didn't throw on the weekend. I wanted to get him a couple innings, but – he took a ball off the, the ankle at Utah and uh, said his ankle wasn't feeling well, so we didn't want to put him in tonight. That kind of cut us a little bit short. Would have liked to get three out of Boston Mabius and, and uh, maybe three out of Luke Sterner, three out of Tyson Heaton, and kind of just shut it down. But, you know, they they got the ball up in the zone and uh, the inability to throw their off-speed stuff for strikes, and Utah Valley did a really good job of making making uh, really good contact with balls down the middle. And so it turned into a really good ball game. You got nine RBIs out of your top four hitters today. You know, Pintar, and it's nice to see Brock Watkins come back and swing the bat the way he did, but Andrew Pintar, he's just been a solid guy for us the entire year. Um, he's the guy you want up with with uh, the winning run on second base and, and uh, two outs in the ninth. I mean, he's just the guy, uh, incredibly hard worker, just, just gets his work in every single day. And it's nice to see Jacob Wilk. Uh, you know, he, we sat him a few games and at the, at the DH spot, Starting to put really good at bats together, and, and uh, as a right-handed hitter in the middle of our really left-handed hitting lineup, heavy lineup, uh, really nice to see him come in in production. And, and obviously, Josh Cowden's a guy who's going to get his hits every day. Uh, Jacob uh, put a ride on one to right center. He did, and I I, I give it ninety um, percent win and ten percent swing. <laughs> he did, he did hit it hard. I will gr- grant it. Yeah, we were trying. I can tell when he hit it. I'm not sure he thought it was gone when yeah. he hit it. We were trying to gauge how much was win and how much was power today because it was a pretty strong wind out all day. But still, uh, two home runs for your guys, including uh, Jacobs there uh, in, in the third. So uh, this game might have felt like it was going to go one way at seven nothing, and then you were in a game at seven six. Yeah, you know, and 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 as a head coach, seven nothing doesn't mean one thing to me. It, it means we need to score more runs because the other team's gonna they're gonna score runs. It just it had that feel to it when they put up one run and then two runs and it's seven two and and then it's like they get another one across. It just didn't feel right to me, especially the way we were we were pitching it. We weren't sharp on the mound and and that's why I I, I went to Reed McLaughlin quick I'm, and he did the job. He you know today he was our stopper. Didn't matter when it was. If it was a fifth inning, fourth inning, if we got in trouble and the game was kind of on the line, which it was, that's when he came in and he did his job. And, and he got us, uh, I don't know if it was an inning and two-thirds or whatever it was, but um, it was very, very quality and probably helped us win the game. Yeah, Reed went 1.2 for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, was, and, and maybe evidence of the fact that you, you said, um, you know, streaks or trends or records, they're, they're rarely that meaningful when it is in-state or crosstown games like this. We saw it again today. Yeah, it just, it just doesn't, for some reason, it just doesn't seem to matter. Um, it, it, none of us really have the records we want right now. 
Um, I feel like we've definitely played the toughest schedule of anybody in our state uh, with the teams we've played. And so we've been battle-tested. And, and although the record, which is a reflection on me and no, nobody else, um, that, that goes along with you know, when I die, they're going to say he was this and this. And that doesn't really matter anymore to me. So uh, our team's better because of the teams we've played, and I think it's showing at this point. You have scored 24 runs in your last three games. Yeah, the guys are, I think, you know, it's just, I talk about putting and free throw three shooting, and it's just the confidence in, a guy misses three free throws, and then what's the next guy do? He free, kind of freezes up a little bit, and that it happens with hitting, and it happened to us at Utah. It happened to us at Dixie. For some reason at LMU, you know, you get a hit that breaks things open, and and then it just starts rolling, and that's kind of what's happening right now. And, and you saw it tonight. I mean, every single guy in our lineup took really good. Not it, not even the guys who, who Jelilich had a great at bat, and it was a walk. Um, Peyton Cole had a seven pitch at bat and got ended up putting the ball in play with two outs. Those at-bats are, are really key to, to build the other pitcher's pitch count, for one. But just production and expanding the lineup and spreading the lineup out, I, I thought our guys did a great job at the plate tonight. It was great to get back in the building with fans in the stands as well. Good buzz, nice energy. Both teams had fans here. And now it's back into the conference uh, competition on week on the weekend with USF coming in for three starting on Thursday. Yeah, I mean, I think we allowed five, 500 fans. I say open it up and let it, let's, let's have a full house. I mean, <laughs> why, why not? It was, uh, it was great tonight. It was, it was great to be back at home after, you know, just talking to you and Duff Tittle, our, our SID, that, that these new guys, the guys who came in last year, have played 32 out of 34 on on the road, and it's that's absolutely incredible yeah. to me. Obviously, because it because of the situation that we're in, but early um, season both years, yeah, exactly. And so it's nice to be home and and uh, feel this. And we're back on the road next week, but we we need to come out Thursday and play like we did today and swing the bats like we did. And finally, what does it already mean to you to be a three and O team in the WCC? Well, it's huge. I mean, I know what it feels to be zero and three when LMU came in here three years ago, and 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 that's not the feeling you want for sure. So. To see yourself in first place or tied for first, uh, that's what we want. I mean, uh, now without having the conference tournament, the, the league winner gets the automatic uh, bid to the tournament. That's been our goal since the fall, since they said there's no tournament. It's not – the goal isn't, hey, let's finish top four and try to win the tournament. It's win the tournament. And so that's our goal every single week, week in and week out. And it, it, and it may or may not change how we coach. Um, I mean, I think you could see us bringing a starter in that was going to start f- – Saturday, if we need a starter to come in and say Jack Sterner to close out a game, maybe on a Friday night, if we need that win, I mean, you, you just never know um, with how how much every single game means in our conference. That much will be on the line. Well, for tonight, uh, today, well done. Uh, four wins in a row. We look for more. Want to see you back here on Thursday. Thank you, Mike. Awesome. Thanks, Greg. All right, that is Coach Mike Littlewood, and that's going to do it for today's BYU baseball broadcast. We thank our crew back at BYU Radio. Our coordinating producer, Terry South. Our engineers, Barry Squires and Sean Faith. Terry also doubling up today as our control board operator as well. Thanks to BYU Radio assistant station manager, Sean O'Neill. And we appreciate Duff Tittle and his crew here at uh, Miller Park for their help in media relations. Good to have Coach Littlewood and Andrew Pintar with us. Big day for Andrew, big day for the Cougs. Final score is 11-7, BYU over UVU. Our next BYU baseball broadcast is Thursday. It'll be BYU and San Francisco in game one of a three-game set. Four o'clock first pitch, 4.06 actually on Thursday and Friday, 1.06 on Saturday. Three games, three daytime affairs for BYU and USF. So until Thursday, my name is Greg Grubel saying in the meantime and in between time, this has been BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Good night and so long from Provo, Utah. You have been listening to live coverage of BYU Baseball on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. BYU Baseball is a production of BYU Athletics in association with BYU Broadcasting. Special thanks to BYU President Kevin Worthen, Vice President Keith Vorkink, Athletic Director Tom Homo, and Associate Athletic Director for Corporate Sponsorships, Casey Stoffer. BYU Baseball is an exclusive presentation of the new skin, BYU Sports Network.